The organization has expanded to include more than 1,500 local fundraising groups in all 50 states, representing more than 1,400 participating locations along with other nations' cemeteries at Arlington. Every year in to, since 2008, Congress proclaims a national, na, proclaims a Saturday in December as National Reefs Across the Day. This day will be held Saturday, December 18, 2021. Why do we? Why do you use live wreaths? Wreaths Reese across America does not decorate headstones. We are honoring all veterans and active military members by placing live wreaths on the headstones of veterans. The fresh evergreens have been used for centuries as beyond as a symbol recognizing honor and as a living tribute renewal annually. 
We want people to see the tradition as a living memorial to veterans and their families. What we do, the core value of the, of the uh, Reese of America is uh, it become known as the world's largest veteran parade, stopping at schools, monuments, veterans' homes, and communities all along the way to remind people how important it is to remember, honor, and teach. Honor. Reese of America conducts several programs to honor our veterans, including our popular Thanks a Million campaign, which distributes free thank you cards to people all over the country to share with veterans as a simple thank you for your service. Teach. Reese of America is committed to teaching younger generations about the values of their freedom and the importance of honoring those who sacrifice so much to protect those freedoms. We offer learning tools, interactive media pro uh, projects, and opportunities for schools, 4-H clubs, scouts, and other youth groups to participate in our efforts. Why do you do what we do? We understand we have Veterans Day in the fall, Memorial Day in the spring, but our service members sacrifice their time and safety every single day of the year to preserve our freedoms. In many homes, there is an empty seat for one who is serving or one who has made the ultimate sacrifice for our country. There's no better time to express our appreciation that during the hustle and bustle of the holiday season, we hope to join us as many of our more than 1,400 participating locations to show our veterans and their families that we do not forget and we will never forget. Today we show a united front of gratitude and represent and respect across the United States of America as we remember the fallen, honor those who serve and their families and teach the next generation the value of freedom. Today on opening remarks, we have two individuals, uh, Alan Wong and Supervisor Stefani from District 4. Uh, my first uh, opening remarks will be our trustee, Alan Wong, trustee of San Francisco City College Board. Alan also is a legislative aide for District 4, Supervisor Gordon Moore. And most importantly, to be noted that Alan has, as elected official, he is the only one in city government that is a uh, military person. So, Lieutenant Wong, will you please come up here? Remember, honor, teach. On a day like this, it makes me think about what it means to be an American. When I think about today, it brings me to this speech that Douglas MacArthur made and to quote a part of his speech, duty, honor, country. This is, does not mean that you are warmongers. On the contrary, the soldier above all other people prays for peace for he must suffer and bear the deepest wounds and, and scars of war. For me, being a part of the military is serving our country. It's a way to remember, honor, and teach. In my own journey to become a service member is because of this cause that motivated me to step up. Back when there was the Iraq war, I saw this story about a colonel and his chaplain that were visiting soldiers that had passed as a way of being able to go back to their families and tell them that they saw them during their last moments. This story motivated me to go on my 12 year journey now to serve my country and be in the military. Soldiers, service members, we are part of this mission because we care about serving our country. But most of all, when we're out there, out in the field, we are thinking about the people to our left and our right, making sure that they are taken care of, making sure that they are safe. Because in the end, that's what it's about. It's not about the politicians that put us in these positions where we have to go to war. But when we're out there in the field, we're out there taking care of the person to our left and our right. It makes me think, of the phrase, I am my brother's keeper. We're out there to ensure that all the folks out there with us are able to go back home and come back safely. 
And today, this is an opportunity for us to think about what it means to be an American, what it means to serve our country, and to be able to honor those that came before us, and also continue the noble ideals that have motivated us to step up and serve in this uniform. Thank you. Explosion and was right there by his side when he woke up. When I needed that man, my dad's best friend in Vietnam, Jeff Wood, to help me with my dad as he struggled with Lewy body dementia, I called him and I said, Jeff, my dad won't listen to any of us, but I know he'll listen to you. He got on a plane and he helped my family with my dad. My dad's experience was one that so many veterans share. It's the reason too many veterans experience poverty and homelessness, and it makes me sick to my core when veterans don't receive the services they need and deserve. They give their lives for this country, and for that we owe them more than just gratitude. We owe them the opportunity to thrive. I am incredibly thankful to have organizations here in the city like Source to Plowshares that provide support to the 25,000 veterans who call San Francisco their home as well as to Wreaths Across America for not only bringing us together to honor those who've served, but also to teach about the sacrifice that our service members endure and to shine a light on the needs of this community. In 2019, I was proud to pass legislation to declare every November as Veterans Month in San Francisco. But today is a reminder that honoring those who've served can't just happen once a year. It's about how we honor our veterans every single day. It's about remaining committed to supporting them and their families in every way that we possibly can. It's about serving them as well as they've served and continue to serve our nation. Thank you everyone for coming out for this year's Wreath Across America Wreath Lane Ceremony. Thank you to our service members and our veterans and have a happy and safe holiday season. Thank you. Our keynote speaker today is uh, Rear Admiral Brian Pinard. He's a United States Coast Guard, 11th District. Rear Admiral Brian uh, Pinard. Yes, sir. Did I say your name right? Yeah. Uh, Assumed his duties as Commander, 11th Coast Guard District in July of 2020. As such, he oversees the Coast Guard safety, security law, enforcement, and environmental, environmental stewardship operations from the California to Oregon border to Peru, including Arizona, Utah, and Nevada. He previously served as commander of the Coast Guard Force Readiness since uh, July 2018. He has been awarded two Legion of Merits, five Meritorious Service Medals, three Coast Guard Accommodation Medals, the Department of Trans Transportation 911 Medal, and several campaign medals, including the Southwest Asia Service Medal. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, Rear Admiral uh, Bainard. Thank you, sir. Thank you all for joining us uh, on this hallowed ground. Uh, Supervisor Stephanie, Lieutenant Wong, thank you for being here and honoring us with your presence. Remember, honor, teach. Today, the Veterans Administration reports that Across our country, 155 national cemeteries, 34 soldier lots and monuments, there are over 4 million American heroes interred. And this uh, is built upon the foundation of veterans cemeteries, 119 in 48 states, and the American Battlefield and Monuments Commission, 26 cemeteries and 36 memorials in 17 countries around the world. In just the foreign cemeteries in Europe, from only the conflicts of World War I and II, over 207 
thousand Americans are interred. Truly, we stand on the shoulders of giants. Remember, honor. Today, there are about 18 million veterans in the United States, accounting for about 7% of the adult population of this great nation. And while this is an enormous number, it represents a change that our all-volunteer force has brought to us in 1980, 18% of the adult population were veterans. Today, similarly, 1.4 million Americans serve in uniform wearing the cloth of their country, accounting for less than 1% of the adult population of the United States. In 1968, that was 3.5 million Americans. As we honor those veterans for their service, I will further challenge you today. If we have learned nothing over the past two years, we must learn this. Our freedoms and our society are underwritten by the service of so many. And so as we honor our veterans, I challenge you to go forth today and to honor the teachers, the social workers, the law enforcement officers, the emergency managers, the border security agencies, as well as our state guard, our national guard, our soldiers, our sailors, our airmen, our Space Force guardians, and the women and men of the U.S. Coast Guard. Honor them not simply with a thanks for their service, but with care for their entire wellness. Because if we have learned nothing else, we have learned that our veterans and those who serve beyond our veteran community must have healthy social, psychological, physical, uh, financial, spiritual, relationship, medical, and other domains of life. Too often we focus simply on uh, the immediate care and we lose out on the long-term mental and uh, other support services that our veterans need, so much more so for those who have served so well and so honorably throughout this national pandemic. Honor. Teach. Each day we are bombarded in American society with messages from a variety of sources. And in that overwhelming tidal wave of messages are a diversity of views about what to value in life, what makes for a good life. It's been said that while we often think that we think our own thoughts, in fact, we mostly think society's thoughts. And so today is a day for us to think carefully and to teach the value of service, to teach the meaning of freedom and to teach what is required to underwrite those freedoms for this great society in which we live. Teach. Ladies and gentlemen, please take today's wreath day as a moment to rededicate yourself, not just for this day, but for every day. Remember, honor, teach.
Well, thank you, Admiral. Now we're gonna have the ceremonial wreath laying, and I believe we have the color guard or honor guard that will be giving the wreath, both of them, and we can have the designated military services representatives place the wreath on the gift here. So the first one will be uh, Colonel George Ishikata, United States Army retired, who will lay a wreath in memory of those who serve and are serving the United States Army. Next we have Colonel Sarling, United States Marine Corps retired, who will lay a wreath in memory of those who serve and are serving the United States Marine Corps. Our next one will be Petty Officer, uh, Daryl uh, Daryl Terry, United States Navy, will lay a wreath in the Veterans Wreath in memory of those who serve and are serving the United States Navy. Our next one is Major Ricardo Villanera, Jr., United States Air Force, retired, will lay a wreath in memory of those who serve and are serving the United States Air Force. We'll Starting our ceremony left. Next one is Christian Astori. United States Space Forces will lay a veteran brief in honor of those who serve United States Space Force Command. And uh, Captain Taylor Lamb, United States Coast Guard, will lay a wreath, which he already did, a veteran's wreath in memory of those who serve and are serving United States Coast Guard. We have Lieutenant uh, J.G. Martin Zuzak, United States Coast Guard, will lay a wreath in, in memory of those who serve and are serving United States Merchant Marines. Uh, Lieutenant Dearson is a 2019 graduate of the United States Merchant Marine Academy. And we have, uh, and it's all been placed, Airman Al Marquez, United States uh, United States Army veteran, will lay a veteran's wreath in honor of the 93,129 United States servicemen from all branches of the service whose last known status was either prisoner of war or missing in action. These individuals have never returned to their families and homes. We should not forget them. Next, we will have the rifle firing volley. Taps will be done by Stephen Morris, the Bugle Across America. Thank you. <clears throat> In closing our remarks by me, we encourage every volunteer here today who places a wreath on our veterans' grave 
to say that veterans to say the veterans name aloud and take a moment to thank them for their service to our country. It's a small act that goes a long way towards keeping the memory of our veterans alive. Remember, we are not here today to decorate graves. We are here to remember not the death, but their lives. Each wreath is a gift of appreciation from a grateful America. The wreath symbolizes our honor to those who have served and are serving the armed forces in our, of our great nation and to their families who endure sacrifice every day of our behalf. To the children, we want you to understand that freedom you enjoy today have not been free, but have come with a cost that someday you may have to pay yourself. As a nation, staying together, we defend terrorism, hatred, and injustices. Thank you to our veterans. We have the freedom to do just that. In conclusion, we're going to have the color guards uh, retrieve the flag. But before that, I want once again to thank, your, to thank Edgar D. Leon. For those who don't know, most of these venues, I've been doing this for years, most of these venues are done by civilians. Uh, without Edgar doing this, and once again, this is the largest venue we have with Reese of America. I have something special for Edgar, so Edgar, come on up. I want to give you something here. Come on, Edgar. So, when I give Edgar, and you know, most people know me, I am uh, like challenge coins. I'm probably the only commissioner in San Francisco that has his own challenge coin. When I got reappointed last year for my second term, that I, just, I wanted to, this is my legacy, that I have my own coin, and the core values in the Air Force is uh, uh, integrity first, excellence all I do, and service before self. So what better three words to honor Edgar and those three words that we use in the military? And of course, like everyone says, duty, honor, and country. So on behalf of myself and the Air Force, this is for you, buddy. But not everybody gets these. There you go. Hey there. And one, and one last comment that's very close to my heart. Close to my heart. So I've been in commission for almost, almost seven years now. And um, one of my responsibilities, well, not really a responsibility, our commission does, uh, we're a legislative aide that reports to the board of supervisors and the mayor's office. However, during my course, uh, besides that, I have taken almost, four, oh, actually over 400 vets off the streets and been able to provide additional benefits to uh, individuals that are from Korea, World War II, Vietnam, Afghanistan, and Iraq. So if you have any individuals that you know anybody that are veterans, you know, I'm going to be out here for about me 15 to half an hour. Please come see me because um, our commissioners, we are a resource to help those individuals and direct them to the resource to get those benefits. And you'll be surprised that there's a lot of vets out there that do not know that they're entitled to additional benefits that can help them during the course of their lifespan. So with that being said, I want to thank, and we're going to have uh, Lito here uh, say a few words, but I want to thank each and every one of our guest speakers here. Thank you so much, because the military is very close to my heart. Um, sometimes when I do these events, I get a little choked up because I have a lot of friends that were in Vietnam that I, <coughs> we go, I lost. Uh, and and I think about them 50, 60, 60 years later. But I salute every one of you. Thank you for remembering us, remembering our fallen soldiers and uh, our leaders here. And I wish everyone a happy holiday and I wish you the best and be safe. Okay, Lito, it's yours. Retiring colors. Sorry about that. We almost forgot to retire the colors here. Okay, once we retire the colors, we're going to have Tony Lizzie again. Uh, God bless America. Just got a little carried away here.
Hey, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our ceremony. Uh, we retired the colors. We're going to have Tony Lindsay again, God Bless America. After he sings, then we're going to have Kindo say a few words about placing of the wreaths. And once again, that concludes everything. And I want to thank uh, each and every one of you, the volunteers, uh, Edgar, our guest speakers, uh, and to repeat myself like a broken record, the military is very close to my heart after spending 29 years. I've been retired 20 years now, and um, you know I still love the men and women in the military. If I can go back in, I would go back, definitely go back in, but I just turned 70, so I don't think they want me anymore. They want the young people. So, so thank you. God bless America, land that I love, stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above, from the mountains to the prairies, to the oceans, white with foam, God bless America, my home, sweet home. Sweet home. Merry Christmas. All right, general announcement. Folks, parents, guardians, and chaperones, please communicate these instructions to your children participating today to ensure they understand which grave sites should not receive a wreath. General wreath laying procedure. Receive the wreath and approach the headstone. Extend the wreath outward, offering it to the veteran. Place the wreath centered with a bow on top of the headstone. Say their name aloud. Please do not remove any items already placed at headstones, such as other wreaths, flowers, and other tokens left by family or friends. For military and cadets, render a slow salute or place a right hand over your heart. In accordance with and out of respect for Jewish customs, we ask that you do not place wreaths on headstones of service members with a Star of David. Please take a moment to stop and say their name but do not place a wreath. This is important. If you come to a headstone with a Star of David and a wreath is already placed there, please leave it as it is, as this may, this may have been placed directly by family or friends. Okay, and lastly, <coughs> excuse me, the wreaths, just walk up the path and all the wreaths are on top of the hill there for replacement. So once again, uh, happy holidays and thank you so much. Tony Lindsay has dedicated two of his new songs from his new CD, Soul Soldier, to the veterans during Wreath Across America. We hope you enjoy these songs as we lay wreaths and remember our fallen veterans. Soul Soldier and Spiritual Moments. Thank you.